Yeah, that's real things dentistry. The place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hints and tips of dentistry. Today is a really neat day. I've got a new camera for my microscope. Um, it's actually an adapter for my iPhone. So long story short, I had to get a new camera because I sold my old camera by accident when I sold a microscope. It's a really goofy story. This is another makeup uh, one that I have. But I needed to, I saw this online and it was actually a decent price. So I'm like, you know what, let's give it a shot. And sure enough, Alberto at Digital Eye Center sent it out and I fell in love with it. So it's really simple. It connects to my beam splitter. Screw it on and that's it, connect my iPhone. So there's a couple videos, it's really short. Actually, ironically, I had to get a buddy of mine to video me setting it up because I had to use my iPhone in the thing. And then later on, I have a couple of, um, there's a couple of videos of two different cameras, three different cameras and two different microscopes. So go ahead and you can compare the two. Okay, recording. All right, so um, the way this works is we're gonna put our phone, look at that. <laughs> oh well, still works. So let's put this on here. And we'll just line it up. Let me just loosen this up a bit. A little bit tight. Takes up once you hear that glass crack. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. So then I can hit video and then boom, we've got, and the Whoa. beauty is that, so say for example, it's in the wrong rotation, like if it's the wrong orientation, you can just use this oh. to turn it so much easier and I can record. See how it just zoomed in too? Yeah. So it'll zoom in on uh, whatever. Or like autofocus you mean? Yeah, kind it'll autofocus like... with the... Oh, because of the camera and the phone, or? Yeah, because the camera and the phone, like this one doesn't. Mm. This one doesn't focus, this one does. That's the beauty of it, so that's why, uh, so that's it. Cool. Thank you. So what I wanted to do was just do a quick voiceover of a comparison of the three different types of cameras I've used. So this is the brand new iPhone um, adapter camera, and this is actually a video if you check the links in the description box below, it's actually the transplant video. So the transplant endo, you can see this is tooth number 38 that was transplanted into the position of tooth number 37 by our old surgeon. And um, it turned out pretty good. This is just a clinical exam. And uh, this is the first time I've ever used the iPhone as a recorder So through the scope. So I, I'm trying to determine whether or not I need to turn autofocus on or off. Uh, but the, the color, I mean, the beauty of using the iPhone is that I can get a upgrade every couple of years or every year and the camera technology always gets better. Uh, the downside is that as the technology gets better my files get way huge and then my poor MacBook has a difficulty editing them in Final Cut Pro. So this video here is actually old school so you can see the color difference. The camera does not focus, so I have to focus the camera itself. So I have to bring the patient um, up or down. That means the chair goes up, and then. But you can see the color is different. The the clarity is still incredible. I love that camera. The camera is absolutely phenomenal. Um, it's just five thousand dollars is too pricey for me, for the the old school camera versus an, an iPhone adapter. I can use my regular phone. So this is a quality here. It's a little more yellow. You can adjust the the uh, white balance, absolutely. Um, this is what 99% of what my footage on my channel has been, of endodontics has been uh, captured with. And one of the, the difficulties I had capturing is that I always had to have my laptop right next to me and it's really hard to try to capture, turn your head and usually there's, I don't have a table next to my, next, next to me so I'd be turning my head behind me um, which made it really difficult to make sure it was in focus. So that's another advantage of having the iPhone right next to your eyes is that you can see if you're in focus or even on the tooth. There's a lot of, there's a lot. I probably have thousands of hours of footage where the, I'm not even on the tooth. You know, you know when you do an endo and it gets so frustrating and you're like, ah, I just want to get this over with. Well, I get that too and I also get it and I'm still trying to video. So those tough cases where I'm like, ah, I just want this to be over with. So does a patient. 
I'm thinking, man, I'm not even in, and I go back to review the footage and it's like, oh, the camera's just off. And the reason why it's off is because the, the beam splitter, the video feed goes through one of the binos. So it doesn't go through both and you don't see both. And finally here, this is at my buddy Majid Prasadonis. This is his Leica camera. So if you've made it this far in this video, I congratulate you. I can't believe you made it this far. Uh, if you see in the lower right, it always says scene one. So this is his, he has a high definition camera through his uh, Leica microscope. I don't understand how it works, but I get a, I get an HDMI out feed and I load that into my, I, um, I record it through QuickTime on my MacBook. So whenever you see that scene one in that ALC one of whatever, um, that's actually a Leica microscope. And that's a beautiful microscope because it does not, again, it doesn't have autofocus, but he has uh, like zoom at the touch of my fingertips, which is way beyond my old school global, which is like steps. Um, so this is actually, I'll walk through this really interesting. These, that's a shell crown. So using what he did was he made the integrity crown and then he hollowed it out and then placed his core. And I needed to do, take the post out of this three five for him because he was going to place his cast, cast post gold, custom post and core, man. I haven't, I haven't even used those for years. Uh, he still loves them. So what we elected to do is I was just going to section off that crown and then take the crown off, remove the fiber post out of this. Actually, it's a, not a Kevlar post. Man, I have never used one too. I haven't seen them for a really long time uh, since like the 90s. They used to be around. People might still use them. They're not a fiber post. They are a carbon fiber posts. So not glass fiber, but carbon fiber. And he wanted that out. So what we did was uh, we took the tooth, we took this off, took the crown off, and then we're just going to use our Munt spurs. You know what? I'll just finish the video um, going through removal of this Munt with the Munt spur. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so you can see it's right in the center of that tooth. And then we're going to remove that. It's pretty easy. And that crown behind it again is a regular integrity crown. Made the crown on the tooth without the core. Took the temporary crown off, hollowed it out cemented the crown down and then packed amalgam and that's a quick way to make your core and it's already prepped so it's actually really a really quick technique okay so we're going to do this in uh, two times speed maybe even three times speed because it's pretty boring so what we're going to do is you can see that carbon fiber post i'm just going to use a fairly standard munts burr that's what i find is most effective you can use whatever you want ultrasonics or whatnot um, I find just using a regular Munts burr, a one millimeter burr, and I'm just gonna, my dental assistant, Angela, who's amazing, is just blowing air down the tooth. And we're slowly gonna make our way straight down, down the tooth, removing, I'm just removing some of the, the core material at, on the uh, occlusal part, and I'm just gonna slowly go down. That's it. It's pretty straightforward. It's easy to perf, because these teeth are really small, but you gotta remember that I have more room, typically buccolingually. So, you know, practice on some extracted teeth. You're doing some post removal. You could argue, why are you removing the post? This is his preference. So I'm just doing what he wanted me to do. Um, remove that post. So you can place this cast post and core. So we're just slowly making our way down straight. And then we'll, it took about eight minutes. You can see I'm getting, I'm zooming in to see, I'm waiting to see that beautiful pink and not red, <laughs> bleeding red. And this is the thing I was talking about. That's the difficult thing about, that's why I'm looking forward to using the iPhone all the time is because I can see that right next to my face if I'm in the, if my, uh, my image is centered because right now it's right behind me. You can see it's at the bottom of the screen, which is actually quite frustrating. After you record, you record something that you're like, wow, it might actually be able to share, learn, learn a couple of tips, teach, you know, you learn yourself too. And then it's like off the screen. So you can see it's off the screen now, which is actually quite frustrating. I think that's why I didn't even use this footage. But because you're wonderful listeners and you're all made it all the way to uh, this time in the video, we're just going to keep it going. So again, we're just slowly making our way down. I was thinking about switching to a smaller Munzberg, but then we made it right down. You'll see a little bit of pink and then that's it. We're good. Okay, so I slowed it down. I sped up sped up because it was getting kind of boring. And you can see not actually the pink. There's a very subtle pink, but what you're looking at is just the cement of the carbon fiber post. 
uh, and I left just a little covering of it and that's it. So, and so after placing some temp bond and some a little bit of cavit in the top of the, uh, the axis, we just recemented that crown, had the patient bite down and she was good. So what you're going to see from here on are just some outtakes, a video that I didn't use. I'm just adding up. I was actually closing that contact a little bit so she wouldn't get so much food. And voila. So I found it was pretty simple. Actually, that was his, his suggestion, just section the crown and put it back on. And I thought it was a great idea. So it worked out well. So you're going to see some outtakes. And thanks so much for watching this point. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Put your comments below. Let me know what kind of camera, if you if you got a scope. Or if you're thinking of buying a scope, I'm gonna, I've am gonna i got a video on what to look for upcoming. And we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Hey, Ashford, all things dentistry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hits and tips of dentistry. Well, let's take a look at a dental implant, which is right here under a microscope. But first, what's really cool is that I got a new video adapter from my iPhone that works with my iPhone on my microscope. Now, this is from a place called Digi, Digi Eye Center, Digital Eye Center. Awesome guy, Alberto. And um, honestly, the price of this equals the price of, of this. And what is this? This is the way I used to do things. This is an adapter. This piece right here is 2,400. I can't believe it, but it is $2,400. This right here, it fits in my beam splitter. This is a Centec camera. So if you're looking for a, a, a high quality HD camera that, that has a C mount, this is a C mount. Um, this is a, a Centec STC. Anyways, we're gonna send this back because the price of this equivals, equates to this. So how does this work? Well. It's amazing. I just fit my iPhone onto this little piece here. I don't have two iPhones. I only have one. So you're going to watch me slowly fit the camera onto here. So it goes on here. And then on the other end, let's just do this. And I'll do another video on how it works. But you'll see me kind of, there we go. Cool, huh? So you can hear me talk and now you see me in my microscope. I love it. And what's beautiful about using my iPhone is that it has autofocus. So this is, now we're finally to the point of looking at a dental implant underneath the microscope. So this is a Nobel, this is an expired Nobel active. Let's get this little guy out of here. Oh no, it's not. I didn't even look, it's a conical. Let's see, it is a Nobel replaced conical connection. Sorry guys. So this is using my new I, digital microscope connector with my iPhone. So let's go ahead and see what does it look like. This is actually a really great camera. Titans just like that and then it has the HDMI in input so and then what we do is we'll take this off we'll just show you how this works so this is actually good Interesting enough, this is actually designed for several other microscopes and Alberto had to have this fabricated. So he had this connector. So this is actually good for Zeiss microscopes. And then because Global has its own ridiculous connector, um, this, was con this was fabricated by them to fit onto my microscope. So this is essentially it. It's amazing. And you can adjust the... Uh, the, only, the main adjustments you can have are if it's Android and iPhone and you can adjust kind of the orientation. So the way that this camera works, the way that my old school camera works is that we just put it in here. And the problem I ran into was price because this together was 5,000. They upped the price on uh, the camera on me. So I decided not to buy it because you can buy it for 600 in the US and then Global cranks up the price to 2500 I don't know why and then it connects via HDMI into my computer so 
I actually prefer using my iPhone because now I don't have to have my computer connected, which is amazing. So much better.